I've lost count of how many rollers I have made for ordinary corrugated iron. It makes me tired just to think about it. Patient followers of this channel will have seen some of them. And this was another one I made more recently. It involved a complete new set of full width wooden rollers set in fancy bearings. It took ages and I really think I got as close as anyone could have with my tools to um, an accurate machine. And I put the corrugated iron in, well just half a width to start with, and it turned out to be the best machine I'd made up to that point. But still, try as I might, I just couldn't get it to roll to a tight curve. I could get it down to about 80 centimeter radius without too much trouble, but after that, it began to kink. Now I understand that the problem is partly due to the type of steel that's used in these sheets. And if I lived in Australia, I could probably get sheets that would work better. But I don't live in Australia, I live in Ireland and I can't find a supplier in any of my local countries. But apart from the material, there's an inbuilt challenge in the shape of corrugated iron. If you look at a cross section, half of the steel is above the center line and half is below. If you force it into a curve, all the steel above that line has to stretch and all the steel below the line has to contract. Now, stretching steel isn't a problem, it just gets thinner. But steel just doesn't want to contract, it would rather buckle or kink, as you can see in these examples. The steel that's on the outer curve is stretched and smooth, but the steel that's supposed to contract has simply buckled. So that was the problem and I was thinking about it for a while and I thought how about leaving the downward half of each bump out of the design altogether? What if there were only upward bumps? Well, <laughs> that might work but I'd need to make myself a new type of corrugated iron that only has upward bumps. To explore that idea, I made myself the bead roller, as seen in previous videos. And it worked well enough making a single upward bump. So I added a second pair of dies, and I made a parallel bump. And that was exciting, and I cobbled together a simple roller, and it worked. Well, not perfect, but there were no kinks and no buckles and an excitingly small radius. Well, you know, <laughs> I was excited anyway. At this point, I had to make a big decision whether to invest a whole lot more time and money on developing this idea or just give up. As you know, we're struggling with the recent death of our son, and to tell the truth, it was easier to just keep going with this project than think of something else to do. I didn't ask myself, why I was doing it, I just did it for a few hours every day and it has kept me sane and distracted at least for a while. I could not have made this machine without my wonderful CNC plasma cutter. Every home needs one. Link in the description. I took the opportunity to upgrade to bigger dies and a bigger shaft for extra strength. And though I started building a frame wide enough for a half width, sheet of steel, I decided to go all the way 
and allow for the possibility of one day going wider. And that meant frames the with a capacity of four feet. Okay. Feed I made a pair of dies bigger than before Straight to point. accommodate the bigger shaft and put them in the middle of the frame, connecting the shafts together with homemade cogs and my machine was begun. This really is just another version of a bead roller, except both ends are supported and not just one. The next frame has three bumps in it. You can't squash all the corrugations or bumps at the same time because the steel is partially drawn in from the sides as it gets deformed. It has to be done progressively. And because of that, I have to produce the entire bump in one pass. <laughs> so there's a lot of pressure going on here. And I have no idea whether the bumps are big enough or at the right spacings. But I'm committed to this format now because it would just take a lot to change it all. The next frame has five bumps in it. Two more are added each time. And that's a whole lot of spacers, wooden ones and metal ones and steel die parts. Now, there is a snag with putting bumps on only one side. The sheet is left curved and curved in the wrong way for my purposes. That's because the steel will only bend to the bare minimum to get through the dies and then it springs back slightly. All this has made me appreciate more the a brilliant simplicity of ordinary corrugated iron, which is balanced and presumably comes out of the rollers perfectly straight. Mine isn't like that and I have to find a way around that backwards curve. But for now, I think this still qualifies as corrugated iron. A new type, yes, but potentially a type that will roll down to a tight curve. Tune in next time.